am a consultant neurotologist with ENT background at Sulphur Royal Foundation Trust. Uh, apart from that, I have got other duties as well. I am a tutor at Manchester University for medical students. I am academic advisor for medical students. I am also their examiner. Uh, I am also the examiner for international students at, at Karachi University as well. Uh, I am the trainer of district nurses, trainer of uh, intermediate therapy, vestibular physiotherapist. And uh, in my career, I have received 18 excellence awards, including lifetime humanitarian award for my charity work. Uh, I founded Association of Pakistani Physicians and Surgeons of UK Foundation, which is a charity. And not for the medics, it's for everyone who has got a good soul, a good heart, and wants to do good deeds. Um, I've also just created recently Women Empowerment Group because I feel that in many organizations, male dominates and female do, do not take uh, uh, the center stage, which I feel uh, very passionate to see that. And this is why the Women Empowerment Group. So I would request sisters to join this group if possible. This is to support women and to good, do good deeds. Today my topic is uh, hearing loss and the problem of the ears. So before I start saying anything, I would like you to watch a video which is going to helpful. It's in Hindi accent, but it's really good. Could you kindly help me with this? No, it's gone. I think I have to go. Sorry, we may have to go back. I thought I will see new faces, but it seems that I know most of you. That's wonderful. Shall we start? Yes, please. Now this will give you insight into how, what's the structure of the year and how it works. Like the sound is there. Functions of the middle ear. The tympanic membrane vibrates with sound. 
sound waves. The milius, which is in contact with the tympanum, receives these vibrations. The moment in turn rotates the neighboring bone, incus. The incus is attached to the stapes that receives the vibratory movement and transfers it to the oval window or the fenestra ovalis. An interesting fact to notice that due to the physical resemblances, the milius is named as the hammer. We can stop again if there is some problem. I can go on to my slides then. Okay. See, there was another link to a Hindi type of uh, presentation, but somehow this. Okay. What you can see is uh, there is outer ear over here. And Hello. Yeah. Yeah. There is an outer over here, and this is the external auditory canal where usually the wax accumulates. But this is um, created in the nicest possible way. Just imagine if this eardrum was sitting over here outside, then all the insects and irritants would affect this eardrum. So the Lord has protected the ear by creating the ear pinna and also the canal. Now there is no advantage of hearing because of this canal. But what it does, it pushes the eardrum right at the back, so eardrum is protected. There are hairs, so that any dust and dirt which goes inside by any chance, then it is protected, the hair keeps it on its sides. The wax also is good for us, if it is not obstructing or if it is not impacting, then it is helping us because it has got some uh, anti-infectant chemicals. So, pinna is good because it says it's got a good outer structure, helps to build the glasses as well. So, the canal is helpful because it pushes the eardrum at the back. When the sound comes, the sound is just like vibration in the air. So, when you put your hand near the speaker, you will find that there is vibration on your fingers because sound is vibration of air particle. It depends how fast and how slow is dependent on the pitch or the frequency of the sound. So the sounds which are high pitch like female voice, they are very high frequency and the male voice low frequency. So the frequency will be much higher in the female voice. Um, now we go to the eardrum. So when the sound comes to the eardrum, the sound will vibrate the eardrum. This vibration again depends on the frequency of the sound. Behind this, you saw in the earlier presentation, there are three bones. One, two and three. We call them malleus, incus and stapes. So malleus, incus and stapes over here. The stapes is attached to the inner ear. Now you can imagine that the uh, system works like this, the sound comes, the eardrum moves, the eardrum moves, then the small bone attached to the eardrum will move, then the middle bone will move and then the third bone will move and this will carry the vibration to the inner ear. Now this is the inner ear which is a shell shaped structure and I am sure that we can see this better in another second slide, yes, you can see this as a shell shaped structure and this is the bone, third bone. So when the sound comes, it gives the vibration to the fluid inside the inner ear. When the fluid is pushed in, it transfers the energy into an electrical energy through the small cells over here. It is like a dam. You know, when you see the water falling from the dam, it converts the energy of the water into electrical energy. Same thing more or less happens that the fluid, when it is pushed, it moves the hair cells. So the hair cell starts moving. 
when the hair cell starts moving it changes the electrical energy and the electrical energy is then carried to the brain through the nerve so this is the nerve over here which you can see so it's bit easy for you to understand now that the sound is coming it's vibrating the eardrum it's vibrating the uh, the eardrum is vibrating the bones and this bone is then pushing the fluid in the inner ear and this push of fluid at different speeds depending upon the frequency makes the sound or makes the sound being heard by the brain so it's a it's a very simple to understand as well but it's a very complex procedure the complex is one sound is different from the other sound right you make a sound which is something important like a speech or you make a sound which is not important which is annoying like a noise or you make a sound which is due to the instruments like hammer and things like that which you which are the part of the job but when they are loud they can create the hearing loss which i will discuss so we can go to the next one please just one second which one please the blue one the blue one i have avoided uh, description of this because this is the balance system of our body now i will describe this at the end because this is uh, different from the hearing structure but it is a part of the inner ear so you can divide the inner ear into two parts one part is the hearing part which is cochlea and the second part is the labyrinth or the balance system which we will discuss at the end is it okay yeah thank you so we go to the next slide so you may do you want to sit and yeah so this is um outer ear is a cartilage which is convoluted into sh different kinds of shapes and it looks nice you know when you look at it it's uh, it has got a different texture different uh, appearance and it looks lot better you know um but there is no advantage of this uh, ear if you look at the rabbit ear the rabbit can move the ear nicely because the muscles of the rabbit's ear can help the rabbit to move the ear this way this way or that way this is a phase of evolution because in early phase the we, we all were at risk any danger we were like this oh be ready to fight or flight either run away or to fight so hearing was very important because sometimes you don't know you have not seen anyone but you can hear something and you say am i confident enough to fight if not then better run away right this was the human instinct at that time the rabbits and the other animals retained this because they were still at danger and we were not as much in danger as before because we moved to the cities and it was not important for us to hear that fine sound of the enemy so evolution has given us something different meaning so this is the cartilage which doesn't move much though there are there are muscles over here some people on youtube you will see they can move their ear i'm sure that you have seen those videos you know where they they can move their ears up yeah. yes so and then this is the part which where they, there are hairs whether there are anti infectant uh, chemicals and there is a wax and there is a secretion called sebum or oil so when the oil secretion decreases or the wax increases then the person will develop the wax problem in the ear and they will say oh my ears feel blocked how oh, can i have um, um wax removal so they will put olive oil or they will go to the pharmacies they will give the drops and sometime even if it doesn't work they will come to us for treatment and i will discuss this treatment sometime you will see that uh, children do put earrings you know girls do put earrings you know what is boys even so um, so there is a risk over here with in for infection so so there is a risk of infection so you have to be careful you know when you go for your children's hearing 
uh, it must be done in an antiseptic way. It should be uh, done properly. And if there is any infection, then you should be ready to cure, cure this infection either by going to GP or using antiseptic, whatever you think, at the right time. Next, please. Now, in some human ear, human ears, you will find a little tubercle. Just put your finger over here and see, see if you can feel any tubercle over here. So, this, this is common in monkeys, right? But in human, only 10% have got tubercle. This, this again shows signs that this is evolution. That in man, the tubercle has disappeared. Again, there is no importance to this one. Yes. Now, some children are born without outer ear. So, you can see that there is rudimentary and there is no canal. So this child is going to suffer with hearing loss, right? Because they can't have the sound transmitted through the outer ear to the eardrum. So this child is going to have problem. One is aesthetically, cosmetically, this doesn't look nice. One. Second, this child will have the hearing problem. Whereas this, there is a deformity over here as well. But you see, this child will not have the hearing problem because the deformity is not causing the obstruction of the ear canal, right? Now, for this child, it's all cosmetic work. We will do cosmetic surgery. But for the other, uh, this, this child, the cosmetic surgery is not going to give help because it's uh, not going to give 100% help. Because even if you do the cosmetic surgery, the problem remains the sound cannot go from the air into the external auditory canal to the eardrum. So, what will happen is, over there we have got option. Option is, can we create a canal? Can we create a little canal which can take the sound? Usually it is not possible. So, I will tell you at the end, what do we do in those circumstances? So, this child will benefit from hearing aid, but a different kind of hearing aid. The different kind of hearing aid because the hearing aid can't sit here and transmit the sound inside because the hearing aid has to push the sound this way. So we put the hearing aid on the bone. Bone is a good conductor of sound, right? So if you put the sound over here, hold anything which is vibration, if you put over here, you can hear this vibration in both ears if you both ears are working. And in case if one ear, outer middle ear is not working, then this vibration can be heard straight away through the inner ear, if the inner ear is working. And if this inner ear is not working, the sound from this side will go to this side and it will be heard. Now what is the problem being faced over here? If the person is on the right side, the child will think the person is on the left side. Right? So they will turn to the left. But we can make this child visually orientated. We can make them uh, to look and hear, look and turn. So we can adapt them, we can, we can train them. So if, they, if somebody is from on this side, they will not just look on this side. What they will do is, they will play active role uh, by looking here and there and just, you know, smiling and then turning. So that it's not embarrassing. That's very important. Or we can have a different hearing aids as well. Next one, please. Any questions so far? No. Okay. Now, sometimes uh, the, the, this ear is formed by three lobes. Three lobes. One, two, three. One, two, three. And this six, lo six lobes form this ear. Sometimes the fusion of this six lobe is not good. So it leaves a little hole. Can you see this little hole? So some children are born with little hole, they are of no consequences, as long as the hole doesn't get infected. But if this hole is traveling inside, just like this is traveling inside, and if this gets infected, then it will discharge like this. So this is a congenital problem of a preauricular pit, preauricular in front of auricle pit which when infected can give rise to a sinus, discharge and all these things. But again, it's not common. 
Now, this is the wax I was talking to you. Sometimes when you have got the problem, you will just use olive oil and that's the end of the matter. Things will get better. But sometimes it doesn't. And then you need to see a doctor or a district nurse. So when you come over into the clinic, we take this wax out by a curate, which is a plastic curate, and it takes the wax out. Um, so this must not be used because when you use the cotton bird, we all use cotton birds sometimes, you know. Uh, but the problem with the cotton bird is that some wax is rolled over and it comes with the cotton bird, but some wax is pushed backward. Just imagine if I'm pushing my uh, cotton bird like this, then I'm moving it like this. So some wax which is over here will be coming out because it will stick to the cotton. But some wax which is over here will be pushed inwards, right? So cotton bird can be dangerous as well because if you push it too hard, you can go right up to the eardrum and I have seen many cases where people have come with a hole in the eardrum because they have pushed it too hard. So if you want to use it, that's fine. Use the fine ones and don't go too deep, right? And the other, the other option is jet of water, like a jet wash. So you go to the district nurse, district nurse will, you know, the doctor will give you some drops you, you have to use the drop for 10 days and then the district nurse is going to push some water and this water when goes over here, it brings the wax out. So all the wax out, right? And you, honestly, it's unbelievable. The people who come with this problem, they will say, my world is upside down. I can't hear. Because this is a sudden hearing loss. If there is a person who has developed hearing loss over the period of many, many years due to age, they are adapted. But those who develop hearing loss suddenly, the world is upside down. I told doctor, I don't know what my wife is saying. I said, look, even if I make you better, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to make you able to hear your wife. You will always say that I don't hear you. She will always say that you don't listen to me. So uh, this is Joe. So, People do come and this is a big problem. It's not a little problem. So if you ever feel that your ears are blocked, go to your GP, get your ears checked out. If there's a wax, use olive oil, which I think is one of the inner substance, best substance. It's a, and sometimes, you know, uh, when the wax is out, I tell the patient that use olive oil once or twice in every four, six weeks time. It's a moisturizer. The Egyptian princesses used to wash their face with olive oil. It is a moisture. So just use the moisturize your skin of the ear canal as well. Okay, next slide please. Now, sometimes the infection can happen. The infection can be a nasty infection like this. And sometimes the infection can be of the hair follicles. So it may be minor, but it's painful. So you will straight away feel pain and there may be a swelling, there may be a redness. You know, you have got a clear uh, inflammatory picture of an infection. Swelling, redness, pain, tender to touch. Whereas this is a minor infection, you may have discomfort, you may not have tenderness much over there because uh, over here it's the skin, so it's easy to feel the tenderness. Over there, you have to put your finger to feel the tenderness, so people may not be doing this. So, infection can appear in different forms, but this infection is of the outer ear. And this has got a different treatment than the other infections. Now, sometimes children can put foreign body in the ear, you know, they are playing with some um, markers or some something, you know, Play-Doh or something, is that right? You know, uh, foreign body, little pencil, Ends. So they can come with this one. Some people can come with flies and um, things like that. So different people have got different types of foreign bodies depending whatever they are using and why they are using and by accident or by just uh, rubbing this in their ear, you know, things happen. We advise, you know, don't put your finger. Sometimes in Pakistan, India, it's very common to use the hairpin which uh, ladies use and they push, push this hairpin 
as a second purpose, second job <laughs> of removing the wax. Okay. So next one, please. Okay. So now this is a cauliflower ear. This this is happens what you call it um, a battered wife. You know, like assaulted, repeatedly assaulted. And same thing happens uh, in rugby players and boxers. You know, when they get a repeated trauma, they bleed inside and the bleeding is healed with the scarring and this gave rise to a cauliflower ear. So it's, uh, it's seen in some societies still um, where the women suffer with this condition because of repeated assault, which must not happen. Now, this is a psoriasis. Psoriasis is a condition where the skin is shed rapidly, dead skin, too fast. So you can see some redness, you can see scaliness and all this thing. And when this happens, this is a swelling inside. So it doesn't allow the wax to come out as well. So we have to look at this condition, we have to treat this condition, we have to make sure that this doesn't happen. So if you find that there is any scaliness and things like that, E45 type of cream or Vaseline and things like that, they're very good to, to, to moisturize your skin of the, of the ear. Now, this is, a, this is a cartilage, it's not a bone, it's a cartilage. So if there is any swelling, it will be a tumor of the cartilage. But this is a benign, you know, it's a localized swelling, which can be taken out nicely. It can be shaped. Now, this is keloid. Sometimes when there is any surgery, we react with accessory scarring formation. And especially the Afro-Caribbean people, they react too much. This is very common among them, but anybody can react. And sometimes, you see, this uh, lady went for some uh, ear piercing, and this came as a keloid. And you can see this one. So we all are at risk to some extent, but certain people, certain races, like uh, Afro-Caribbean race, they are uh, more at risk of keloid formation. So with this, uh, one has to be very careful for surgery to the external appearance because keloid formation can happen. Now, sometimes infection can happen because the cartilage is lined by perichondrium. So this is one of the infection, which is a nasty infection, is extremely painful. Now, when somebody is hit on the ear, there may be a bleeding behind this. In, in, the, in the ear, behind and under the skin, and this is called hematoma. It's a collection of blood. Now it's very easy. You put the patient, drain the blood, put a pressure bandage, and it's usually okay. Sometimes we may see some little cyst and tumor, so we have to be very careful if we find anything on our ear which is bleeding or which is progressing in size, then we must uh, see the GP. It may be cyst. Or it may be tumor. Now, this is a normal looking eardrum. So you can see that this is how we look at the eardrum. Remember that I showed you a little bone attached to the eardrum. This is the bone which is attached to the eardrum. And we can see the shining cone of the light. This light is not present as such light there. This is how when we look at it, the light is perpendicular. So it gives us a cone of light. Now, this boy was crying. So there is no abnormality. Sometimes the crying can cause the same problem as if there was an inflammation. So we have to judge whether it's due to crying or whether it is due to inflammation in young children, you know, who come with the screaming. <laughs> this is just a dead skin lying on the eardrum. Nothing abnormal again. Just use olive oil, that's it. This is the dead skin which has formed a crust. Now, it's very important to tell our junior doctor not to pull it off because if they do this, they can make a hole in the eardrum. So when we train our young doctors, we tell them that look, when you see something like this, use some liquid soda bicarbonate, olive oil, just play, uh, pour the uh, liquid over here and try to peel it off very gently, very gently like this, like this, like this. If you do like this, you will pull this one, but you will also pull a part of the eardrum. So you will create a hole. And the doctor should not, must not create harm. So you can create harm to your patient. Um, and this is how the training is. Now, 
I'm sure that um, being parents, you have come across your children suffering with glue here. You know, in young children, they, we all are born without immunity. So we develop immunity by re recurrent infections like upper respiratory tract infection, tonsillitis, pharyngitis, sinusitis, rhinitis. So in, at the back of the nose, there is a tube which runs to the ear. Now let me take you back to It's very important for um, uh, parents of young children to know this. Can you see that the air which is coming from outside is up to here? Right? Now, the eardrum can vibrate nicely if there is air on both sides. So, the air in this space comes from the, through the tube which runs from the nose to the middle ear. Now, just imagine if I block this tube, what will happen to the air? Will the air go in the middle ear? No. no. The air will not go in the middle ear. If the air doesn't go in the middle ear, then the pressure of the air will remain the same or it will decrease. Because the air is not going. The pressure is due to air. So if the air is not going, then the pressure will decrease. The pressure will become negative. What do you do when you switch your hoover, vacuum cleaner? When you switch your vacuum cleaner, you create negative pressure. And what, what, uh, what happens with the negative pressure? It sucks the dust. Same thing happens when the air doesn't go, the pressure drops. It becomes negative. So it sucks the water from the lining, from the blood vessels, and it makes the lining of the cell like this to like this. And this is like the lining of the nose. So it starts secreting mucus just the nose will do. So this whole space is filled with water and mucus. Where is the problem? The problem is the tube which is running from the nose to the ear. And in young children, this problem happens more often because the position of the tube is more like this. Whereas in adult, the position is like this. So any tonsillitis, adenoid enlargement, lymphoid tissue enlargement, rhinitis, nose infection, upper respiratory tract infection, acid reflux, this all can block this tube. So the glue ear can be formed and this glue ear will, will result in speech problem, understanding problem, learning problem, behavioral problem and up to the age of five you have to keep a good eye on your children. Are they hearing very well? If not, if their speech is developing nicely, if not, if their understanding, learning, behavior, balance is okay, if not, see your GP. <coughs> so far so good, or there is any question? <coughs> any question? No. This is not an infection, infection. There is no bacteria or viruses over here. It has formed because of the negative pressure. And But if we don't treat this, then <coughs> this blue ear can, can become like this. Usually it's okay. But now what has happened is, in this blue ear, the drum will get retracted. The ear drum will go and lie, and lie posteriorly or behind on the inner ear. So there is no space between the ear drum and the inner ear. That space has gone because the ear drum has gone back to lie down like this. And that will create the hearing loss. Yes, please. Yes, how do you detect the ear? Right. You have to look at it, first of all, for examination wise. You have to look at the ear. Second, you can do the pressure check, which I will show you at the end. You can do the pressure test. In the pressure test, when the eardrum is moving nicely, the pressure will be like this. When the eardrum is not moving, the pressure will be like this. So you can check it. But examination is enough for doctors who are specialists. Right. So, yes, does it affect children's sleep, these problems? Children's sleep can be due to the cause, which is the cause of the glue ear. Not because of the glue ear, just imagine that if there's a problem with the nose. Now that can affect the sleep and that can affect the eustachian tube and that can cause the glue ear. So the problem which is causing the glue ear may be the problem causing other problems.
Now sometimes there may be infection, you know. These are the viruses, bacteria, fungus, depending upon our immunity. More immunity problem we have, more chances of fungal infections, right? And they are fungal infections are a little difficult to eradicate. So immunity is very important. So you can see that redness, this is different than the glue year. In the glue year, it was oily appearance. Can you see this oily appearance? There is no redness over here. There is an oily appearance over here. But in the infection, you can see that oily appearance. This is acute infection. If we don't treat this, this the, the nature has got an, um, a, a method to protect us. If this goes up, it will go in the brain. If this goes behind, it will go in the tissue behind. If this goes down, it will go in the blood vessel. So the nature wants to rupture this outside. Once it's ruptured, our immunity will take over or the antibiotics will take over and this will be healed and then the drum will repair itself. This is how the nature helps us, right? In case if our immunity is not good, if the repeated infection happens, then we may be left with a little hole which can be small, which can be big. So this is chronic infection. Now in women especially, uh, with each pregnancy, sometimes the bone of the middle ear, which is attached to the inner ear, can become stiff. So the sound is coming to the drum, to the small bones, but when it comes to the last bone which is attached to the inner ear, this doesn't move. If this doesn't move, then the sound will not be carried to the inner ear. So the person will have hearing loss. But it's very easy. When this happens, we take this one out, we put a little piston with a little fat in the... And this works nicely. Right? Simple surgery. It's not as simple as I'm saying, but it is not difficult. <laughs> yes. Then we see the inner ear. The inner ear is a cochlea, it's a shell, two and a half turn shell. It has got three compartments, one, two and three. Right? So in this, there are three compartments, upper, lower and middle. You can see upper, lower and middle. Right? So now you can imagine that when the bone, last bone is moving, it is moving the fluid in the upper compartment. Now it's very important that there is a lower compartment as well. Because every time the bone moves, it is pushing some energy. Right? If there is energy coming into this room, but is not consumed, what will happen? The energy will accumulate over here. It will explode the windows, explode the doors and the, and the walls. Right? So the energy has to be consumed. So when the energy comes from the last bone into the fluid, moving the fluid, it is consumed in moving the fluid as well as it is given as a wave going backwards, outwards. So if I show you, so all the energy which is coming here will be used in moving the hair cells and the remaining will come over here and then there is a membrane over here, so it will just move the membrane. So the net energy in the inner ear is zero. Energy does not remain in the inner ear. Now this is very important because there is a mechanism which is so fine that all the energy which comes in the upper compartment is used and the net gain is zero. Now let's go. You can see that if I were to make this um, shell-shaped structure into like this, you can see that this is the area which is close to the middle ear is very high frequency area. And this area is low frequency. So this is 20 hertz, such a low frequency sound. This is 20,000 hertz. So the human ear can hear 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But some animals can hear lower than 20 hertz. 
and some can hear higher than 20,000 hertz. So bat, you know, you can see they hear 40,000 hertz. Mice, they can hear 10, 10 hertz. So you must have read when the earthquake was coming, the mice were coming out of their hole and they were running before the humans. It's in holy books, isn't it? That the animals were running before the uh, humans because they were, their low frequency is very good, so they can hear the vibration. They, can, they know that disaster is coming, so run. Out of the hole and run. Right? Now, this is the big spectrum from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. But we don't need this much for our speech because the speech we have developed is between 500 to 8,000 hertz. So from 8,000 to 20,000 hertz is important sounds for us but not for our speech. So from 20 hertz to 500 hertz is important sound of noise and vibrations and everything but not for our speech. Our speech is this much, 500 to 8000. So when we check your hearing, we check from 500 to 8000, not from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So we are checking your hearing for speech only. But you may have a hearing problem beyond this, but there is a limit to what we can go and assess. Okay. Um, we have a... I think it's working. This is just a short video which will be helpful to understand Do you have any question, anything you would like to ask me? Yes, please. The sinuses, you see the nasal sinuses, right? Because these sinuses are affecting the tube at the back of the nose. So their effect is on the tube running from the nose to the ear, but not on the hearing of the inner ear. So it's, it's causing the fluid in the middle ear, it can do this. And sometimes, you know, you feel like a pressure. So you do like this finger and say, oh, there's a pressure in my ear. Just like as the train is going through the tunnel and you feel this pressure, or the aeroplane up or down, you feel this pressure. So the sinus infection can cause the tube, eustachian tube problem, the tube taking the air from the nose to the ear. Right? But I'll discuss more with you later on if you have got this problem. That's fine, this is, this is also okay. This, this one or the previous one? Yeah, which one? Any, any one of them is fine. Yes. There are cases where the hearing loss is not present but tinnitus is present. For example, any whiplash injury, if you had a road traffic accident and you had a whiplash injury, you can have the tinnitus. If you had a head injury without hearing loss, you can have tinnitus. So, 88% of the time, the tinnitus is present with hearing loss and 12% cases, the tinnitus may be present without hearing loss. So the biggest co-relationship factor of tinnitus is with the hearing loss. If somebody ever gets tinnitus, they must have their hearing checked out. Is the tinnitus reversible? The tinnitus, uh, uh, let me, yes, let me give you some good introduction about tinnitus as well. It's okay, sir, no problem. We'll just, um, we'll go back to the problem. So we lost the internet connection. Yeah. 
we'll go back to it. Uh, one question. Yes, sure. Yes. Again the same again the same nasal problem. Eustachian tube. Yes. Well I can I can show you something from here is You can see that these are the hair cells. There are three rows of, all along the lining, there are three rows of cells which are outer hair cells. And there is one row of cell which is inner hair cell. These are the tuners. You know when the radio station is not tuned, you tune them. So these cells are responsible for tuning the sound. Whereas this cell is responsible for listening the sound. Right? Now, I'll show you something you might have heard about newborn hearing screening, which every child undergo at the time of birth. Their hearing is checked, and I'll show you how it is checked. Now, same thing happens. You can see the cochlea, upper chamber, lower chamber, and this is the middle chamber, which is the listening chamber. And these are the outer hair cells, and this is the inner hair cell. Right? Now, you can see this in the outer hair cell, this is the inner hair cell, sorry. This is the inner hair cell with the nerve fibers. When the sound is coming, the cilia are moving. When the cilia moves, there are holes over here, fine holes, where the sodium and potassium is going out in. So the electronegativity is changing. And this is changing as a current going to the brain. Now, let's go to the next one. Now, this is your outer hair cells jumping up and down. So what is happening if I do like this? I am doing exercise, I am creating what? Energy? Energy, right? So this energy of jumping up and down can be traced if we have a microphone over here. Now you see, the inner hair cell was not jumping. 
in the red cell is stating cilia moving. The energy of the cilia movement is not much, but the energy of the cell moving is jumping is good energy, right? And now we can put a little probe over here and check the energy of the outer hair cell in a newborn child. We are not checking the hearing of the child, we are checking the tuning of the child. But if this is okay, then that should be okay. The inner hair cell should be okay. So 99% of the time when this is okay, the inner hair cell is okay. There is 1% chance or less than 1% that inner hair cell may not be okay, but this may be okay. And this is we make the wrong diagnosis because we are dependent on this one for screening. But because 99% offer a better advantage, so we take the risk of 1% being wrong. So we admit that we may be wrong in 1% cases because this may be working nicely, but the inner hair cell may not be working nicely. Right? So we do the newborn hearing screening to say, this is what we have tested and its limitation. Do you understand this? Now this is what your cochlea is doing. When the sound is coming, the inner hair cell and the outer hair cells, they are moving like this. Right? And this is the sound is being transmitted. If the, this is the middle ear, if the bone which is a, of the middle ear is attached to the cochlea over here, if the sound is stimulating this area, we are hearing low frequency, then middle frequency, then high frequency, sorry, high frequency, <coughs> then middle frequency, then low frequency. So this is the system in which it works. And you will see that with the age, the high frequency is affected before the low frequency. The high frequency is responsible for speech discrimination with noise. So when the high frequency goes down, people will say, Zara shore kam karo. keep it down, I can't hear very well. When people are talking around me, I can't hear very well. I don't like noisy places. They like one-to-one -one in a quiet room, right? They don't want to admit they have got a hearing loss, but they will avoid the noisy places and people will think, Oh, he's getting old, he doesn't like all these things now. It's not. He is not admitting, he or she is not admitting they have got a hearing problem. And because they know they will suffer in the noisy environment, so they go to the quiet environment. So they sit with their friend uh, in, a, in a cafe, outside cafe rather than inside cafe, which is noisy. Right? <coughs> and they will sit very far away in an area where they can talk with someone nicely without the noise of the music and all these things. So you have to look at the person and they will feel embarrassed so they will nod, they will smile as if they have heard. This is the adaptation, this is the strategy they have got. Right? Not their fault. Because over the period of time working in the noisy industry, machines and all these things, noises, it has affected their hearing. So over the period of time, they have developed this strategy. There was a professor of psychology, Albert Merbayan, in America. He said that 93% of the communication in, uh, in communication of affection is nonverbal. Nonverbal, the gesture, my tone, my change of tone, the eye contact, the facial expression, 93%. It's like your mom saying, hmm, and you know exactly what mom means, right? Right? You know exactly what she is. She hasn't said anything. She just looked at you and eye contacts and facial expression. And you know exactly what she is trying to say. And same thing what happens, you know, if your friend is saying to you, hmm, <laughs> you know you have been, you've done something silly, silly mistake. But this is how, how our communication works, you know. But it only works 93% affection. Brother, sister, mummy, hus husband, wife, children, mom, like a family or friends. It doesn't work 93% outside. Outside, the ratio is less, but there is a good amount of non-verbal communication. This is why when the patient comes, we don't just listen to your words, we look at your expression, we look, we have eye contact with you, we want to read you, 
where it is coming from, what are the things which you want to say but not saying to us, right? So we try to understand you from verbal and non-verbal communication point of view. And this is the pathway which goes from the nerve to the brain. Sound. Now, the sounds are regular, at regular interval. But when it is noise, it's not at the regular interval. See, this is noise, random, right? Okay. So you can see that this is a speech banana. Lama, ba, da, da, ha, pa, cha, ka. These are your low frequency, middle frequency, and half frequency. So, satha is high frequency. So, a child born with uh, high frequency hearing loss will say, not will not say school, but say school, cool. And you think a child is saying cool, but actually the child is saying school. So, their tha will go. So, they will not say thought, they will say ot. So, their speech for low frequency will be okay. So, da ba will be fine. Da, da will be okay. But when it comes to thought, it will become odd. So, children will miss this one. These are your um, outer hair cells, inner hair cells. You can see that with the, uh, after working for so many years in the noise industry, machines, factories, noise, they, they have been affected. And this was an explosion. So there was an explosion which could be you know, balloon near the ear sometimes and this can cause the hearing loss. And sometimes, you know, you wake up so one day, uh, somebody may, may wake up one day and they may find that they have lost their hearing. If any time you feel that your hearing has gone down suddenly, go to your GP because they will first make sure that are, there is no wax and if there is no wax, they will arrange an urgent hearing test and they will give you steroids. Because you've got a 24 hour is the best chance to get your hearing back. Is the steroids and or? Oral. Oral. Oral, yes. This is the hearing test. So when the result is over here, we say normal, mild, moderate, severe, profound. But it may be that the low frequency may be normal, the middle may be moderate, and the high and the high frequency may be severe. Right? So, I'll show you. This is normal hearing. So we test it. This uh, is right ear circle and this is left ear process. Now with the age, the high frequency is going down, 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 down. So the gentleman will, or the lady will say, I can't hear when it's noisy. You see? If this is 85 year old, it's, it's close to normal. But if this is 18 year old, then it's not normal. Now you can see that the, when the sound was given through the bone, the person can hear. But when the sound was given this way, the person can't hear. So the problem is in the outer ear, wax, middle ear, infection, or fluid in the middle ear, right? So we know by doing the test when the problem is. Is it in the outer ear? Is it in the middle ear? By looking as well, when, when we find this, we know that the problem is not in the inner ear because the bone conduction is good. And when the sound is given to the bone, the person can hear nicely. But when the sound is given through the outer ear, to the middle ear, to the inner ear, the person can't hear. So the problem is in the outer or middle ear. Same thing. The, uh, the bone conduction is great, the person can hear, but the air conduction is not great. So there is a problem in the outer or middle ear. Same. Now, we can see that the, when the sound is given through the outer ear is not good. But when the sound is given through the bone conduction is not good, but it's not as bad as the air conduction which means there is some wax in the ear canal and the hearing has gone down as well. So at least we can improve this hearing to this level if it is a temporary problem like wax. Now this is a typical of a person who was working in the noise, who has worked in the noisy industry. Right? High frequency hearing loss. 
again you see the air conduction is not good the bone conduction is not good but it's not as bad as the ear as well as inner ear now ma'am you were asking me about the glue ear how to find in the in the normal ear when the ear drum is moving nicely this is the pressure we will obtain when there is fluid behind the ear drum we will see the pressure will become like this now when the tube is per work, working partially is not open fully but it's open slightly we will get pressure negative pressure right and this will be this will be given to us when there is fluid behind the ear drum so we know exactly by doing the pressure check when the third bone which i showed you become fixed in pregnancy which i have shown you water sclerosis then the drum will not be vibrating nicely if the bones are fixed then we will get pressure like this and if the ear drum is atrophic you know and it's moving like this if your ear drum is moving like this then we will get a pressure like this because this is moving it's so thin it's so atrophic that it's moving like this this is how we test young babies you know we ask them to sit and then we um tune them to turn to the sound with the light so they find reward light is the reward for them ah if i turn here i will see light so they sit here and then we tune them and then they turn to the sound and then they get reward as a light like a you know like a parrot or anything at all which puppy or now there are different types of hearing aids so one which can be behind the ear which can be full size in the ear which can be half shell so smaller which can be mini canal and which we can be completely in the canal so there are hearing aids which are invisible hearing aids as well and sometime in children we may implant the hearing aid in the middle ear so they are not visible and they don't need to be they didn't, don't need to have any tuning as well but i'm talking about children as well special conditions now the balance how do we balance ourselves if i am putting my one foot up my both feet are giving the information to the brain that there is no input from one the input from the second one has become higher because i am taking the weight of my weight on one foot one leg right if i am turning my neck like this my inner ear is giving the information to the brain that my head is turning like this when i am looking my eyes are giving the information to the brain that what i am seeing right will i be turning like this will i be doing like this right a gymnast a person in the gym you know gymnastic act and things like that they they have got so many rapid activities they are telling the brain rapidly so why because if i lean this way the brain is making me balanced by making the muscles on this side weaker because there is no need but this side more stronger so i can still be balanced in space and if i'm doing like this going up up to that stage then the brain knows i have to be well balanced in order to come down and be still firm on the on the ground close your eyes now this is what i uh, i would like to discuss there are three inputs right one input is i the other input is inner ear and third is the muscles joints from neck or from your feet a person who has got the vestibular system may function but as soon as they close the eye their function becomes because we need two out of three inputs two out of three input at least to function right so if you have got a balance problem and if you close your eyes then one out of three is working input is working that's no good so people can have some balance issues and there may be issues where there is a problem of the brain 
when you may be suffering with hypoglycemia, you may be diabetic and you have taken a lot of tablet or you have been fasting, you feel dizzy or dehydrated, you feel dizzy. Certain medication can make you feel dizzy because when you sit, when you're sitting and then you stand, your blood pressure drops on standing. So when the patient comes to my clinic, I do tertiary dizziness and balance clinic. Tertiary means that I don't see patients referred from GP. I only see patients referred from consultants from northwest of England. So it's a complex dizziness and balance clinic. Um, so I'll, I'll explain to you a bit more. You can see that the input, the vestibular, which is inner ear, the balance system you saw first, which you said, what is this blue color? Somebody said that, didn't you? Yes, yes, that's fine. Gunnar said that, you know, such a Gunnar. So that is the vestibular structure. The visual, the side, the proprioceptive, your muscles and ligaments, they are giving the information to your brain. And the brain is taking the information by, you know, it's like a submarine, right? The pilot will not go forward unless all the information is correct from all sides. If the information is not correct, the pilot will say, oh, wait a minute, I'm not taking my submarine forward, there is something, something wrong. But brain, the problem with the brain is, if any information is wrong, brain wants you to be safe. So the brain wants to make you dizzy, so that you can stay still and not to move. Because brain thinks that you are in danger. Sometimes when we don't find any disease, we give you vestibular exercises so that you can adapt your brain, you can tell your brain, you have got the wrong information, change, your, change yourself, I want to adapt you. So you do the vestibular exercises. Now, there are certain conditions, uh, I'll explain to you, where you can get this uh, the physiology, you see, the balance mechanism is over here, right? The information goes to the brain, now, uh, these are the different parts of the brain and it is intimately connected to the eyes, right? So when we do the test, we, we look at the eye. For example, do you want to come over here? So when the patient comes to me, I look at uh, their eye movements, you know, first of all. Can you follow my finger, please? Now, this can tell me a lot about, about this one second, sir. About, the three muscles, the nerves, which are controlling the eye movements. So I am checking all these three. Then I am asking this young man to look at uh, my finger when the finger is raised. So not to move your neck, right? Now see, his eye movements are quite good. There are some patients whose eye movement will be like this and then stop and then go like this then I know that is a central problem. So I can pick up the central problem. Then I will, I'm going to challenge this area, vestibular nucleus, and this connection. So this is what I want to see the connection. So I'm going to move your neck, but please look at my, uh, my nose, right? So see, his eyes were focused on my nose. They were not moving. If the eyes are not focused but they do like this, then I know that this connection is wrong. This is faulty. So I have to address this connection. Right? So, so sometimes the problem is in the inner ear, there is a condition called benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. What happens when you move your head, roll over in bed, you feel dizzy. Right? Look up, look down. So it's easy for me to bring this patient. Come over here, son. Today you are my guinea pig. Huh? <laughs> patient today. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's very easy to understand this. The other way. <laughs> So, I can just turn his head to one side and look at his eyes and then I can turn his head to the other side and look at his eyes. Now this is one ear canal, but the most common is the posterior ear canal. So I can ask him to sit up please, shuffle back, you sit here sir, that's fine, little bit forward, little forward. 
So I'm going to turn and feet up, feet up. Yeah. I'm going to turn his neck like this. So I'm testing this one, and I will take this down. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, and I will look at his eyes. If his eyes start rolling, and I will show you something. This is what I'm trying to look. Excuse me, just one second, because I wanted to see this one. This is very important. Just watch this one, please. Now, point your mic. To, can you point sorry. your mic near the speaker? Okay. No, it's just the video only. Right. Let's start again. Um, okay. Let's start. Just watch his eye movements, please. Okay. You see, they will start rolling. Can you see his eye movements rolling? Now, this is what I want to see. If the eye movement roll, then it's a two-minute job for me to do a maneuver, move his body in such a way that the crystal which has come in the canal, the blue pouch, I can put this back into the position, and the patient go home. Today, this morning, I had a clinic, and this lady came in a wheelchair. Right. She said, oh, I had four attacks this morning. So when I examined her and I found that this is problem, so I maneuvered. And she went back home with no wheelchair, walking on her feet. And then at the end, she said to me, doctor, can I give you a hug? <laughs> so she hugged me before she going. Because just imagine coming in a wheelchair and going on your feet back home. What a difference it makes to that person. Ask that person. They will tell you, you know, what different it, it makes, you know. So, um, this is what we do, that Meniere's disease, in some cases we get a hearing problem, tinnitus and the dizziness. When this is a combination, we check for Meniere's disease. And then acute, sudden attack of viral labyrinthitis, inflammation of the inner ear. You will be in bed for two weeks, you know, with this attack. And we know that this is the problem. Then it can be due to trauma, it can be tumor, it can be autosclerosis, the bone getting thick. Uh, then central cause. The central cause may be stroke and multiple sclerosis, right? MS. So uh, migraine, vestibular migraine. So some people will have this headache and the dizziness. The headache is not prominent. So the person mind will not go towards migraine they will think more in terms of dizziness. But when we take the history, we find there's a headache and dizziness both. Now, multiple sclerosis, they come with fatigue, they're tired, they find difficulty walking, they've got blurred vision, they've got problems controlling the bladder, numbness or tingling in different parts of the body, and muscle stiffness and spasm, problem with balance and coordination, thinking, cognitive function, learning, planning, these are all affected. So, uh, especially when we see somebody, you know, these are the different causes. Um, thank you very much. Any question? Most welcome. You mentioned earlier about the sudden damage to cochlea. Yes. By some blow. Yes. Something like that. At that time, you said to see if you also have to train your wax. That's not matter. Right. Now, does it mean that if wax was blocking that, you couldn't get the cochlea checked out or something? Yes. Problem is this that the wax can cause sudden uh, blockage or sudden hearing loss as well because the wax becomes hard impacted. The person feels, oh, no, I can't hear very well. Now, this is one, but we don't know what is going on beyond, behind the wax. It may be the cochlea also. 
So we treat one thing at a time. The most common is wax. So we treat the wax and wax out. But so, sometime person feels totally dead ear. And that is the condition where we have to be very careful. If you can't hear anything at all, with wax you can hear. Mm -hmm. Because wax is not going to cause more than 40 decibel loss. But with a sudden hearing loss, you can't hear anything. You can only hear this one. So if you block it, you can't hear anything. So this is the condition where you have to be very careful and you have to seek the help of your GP. Um, did you say in vertigo yes. that you realign your crystals and it Yes, okay. that's right. No, um, my daughter's had vertigo a couple of times, not very nice. So is there anything I can do to fix it? You can learn how to do the apply maneuver. If she is suffering with uh, vertigo due to this BPPV problem, oh. only BPPV problem, then I, there are uh, YouTube videos which can show you apply maneuver. Okay. Right? Very easy to do. Yes. I train the parents or the fam. I can train the carers, you know, the spouse, to do this so that they don't have to come to hospital. You don't want to drag them to the hospital again and again, right? It makes the clinic busy and then you have to work on Saturday to earn more money. No good. Is it a recurring problem or will it just actually, once it's fixed, it's fixed for a while? It's more recurring in older than 65, female and trauma. Yes, but if not, then it, it goes into remission. Goes into remission. Remission, yes, yes. It's tinnitus. Tinnitus, yeah, tinnitus is a sound which is heard in the ear or in the head without the external source, right? When there is no external source, you hear this sound, sometimes you hear the source, radiator, there is a sound, right? That is not tinnitus. Sometimes you can hear the blood vessels. That is again not true tinnitus, but by definition it is, but it's not true tinnitus. Now. You have to realize this, that tinnitus is more common in the elderly group. Why? Because they develop hearing loss. Tinnitus is more common in noise-induced hearing loss because that causes the disruptions of the pathways to predispose with the hearing loss, tinnitus. Tinnitus is more common in patients with head injury. Tinnitus is more common in patients with whiplash injury, road traffic accident. Even children or adults who have got the infection or glue ear or the small bone is fixed and if there is any hearing loss, they will get the tinnitus. So sometimes with the wax, people can come with tinnitus or those who are suffering with tinnitus, when they get the wax, the tinnitus becomes loud, annoying. They're, they can't sleep very well. They get irritability. They find no joy, they find their uh, leisure activities affected, they put stress, they don't feel happy with the friends and family. So tinnitus can be a very annoying symptom. Um, now what to do? There is no medicine or surgery, but you can cause rehabilitation. You see, let me give you one example. You were in your bedroom, you heard somebody walking on the stairs. You think, oh, there is somebody there. So you went there and you found no one. Now second time it happens, you went there and you found no one. Third time you will say, I don't think there's anybody there. So you go there and there's nobody. So you try to ignore it, right? It is easy to ignore because you thought there is somebody there. But when it is coming from here, 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 it's not easy. So the best treatment is CBT to control your reaction towards the sound or to bring some noise which can mask the noise of the tinnitus. So you bring music or any kind of sound in your bedroom. You bring masking noises. Right? So you can hear what those sounds. Now you trust those sounds acceptable because you can see the source. When you see the source, your mind says, that's fine, I can see the source, though it is a noise, but it's acceptable. But when you don't see the source, it's not acceptable, it's annoying. And especially in silence. When everything is noisy, you don't hear much, but when it is quiet, you hear shh, goes like this. 
So one is CBT th treatment and the other is sound therapy. You go to BTA, British Tinnitus Association, and you can order 35 pound worth of masking device, which is, um, uh, I know I can recommend you if you want uh, some, some of the devices. It only costs 35 pounds and here your life is different. You can travel with that one, right? It's a Bluetooth, so you can attach your iPhone with this one. No, it decreases. It decreases. The reason is your adaptation, your brain adapts. So the brain adapts, so it decreases. Right? So tinnitus does not... There are five possibilities, right? It can increase, it can remain the same, it can decrease, it can increase and then decrease, it can decrease and then increase. There are five possibilities, but usually it decreases because a person is more able to control the reaction towards tinnitus. Right? Just like you will say, I'll go with there. You can control this. Right? Same thing happens with tinnitus, but it doesn't happen in a day or two or week or month. It happens over months. Right? I am uh, not only the uh, expert on tinnitus, but I am also a medical legal expert for tinnitus. Because it's a very common after road traffic, not road tra head injuries or road traffic accident or noise induced hearing loss, those worked in factories. Tinnitus causes anxiety, anxiety increases the tinnitus. So there is a vicious cycle. So one increases the other, right? So if you have got any stress, the tinnitus will increase. And the increased tinnitus will make you more anxious, right? It will make you depressed as well. You know, if you are unable to control your anxiety, it will make you depressed as well. So more anxiety and more depression you get, more annoying is your tinnitus. Less anxiety and less depression you get, less annoying is your tinnitus. So you can control this one as like this, right? So for tinnitus, life is not just reading Quran and Hayat and all these things. Life is to enjoy fully. Yes? So don't stay at home thinking, you know, when you go to the different website, somebody said, I've got depression, what shall I do? Everybody's saying, namaz padho, Quran padho, ye karo, wo karo. It's okay, that's good. That's, that's not bad, it's a good advice. But sirf ye karo, that is wrong. You know, there are many things you can do. You know, Allah has not said, you know, you should not enjoy your life, you know. You, sh you can enjoy your life, have a good conversation, go to events. And if you are free, come to the event in the evening. There is a homeless Sadka international event at uh, 6 o'clock at uh, All Saint Church, Hale Barnes. Only 8 pounds with dinner in <laughs> included. And we serve 650 people every month uh, who are homeless in Manchester. So you're most welcome this evening if you can come. Right? Uh, as in regard to putting olive oil in your ear, yes. should it be any, can it be any olive oil or does it have to be specific? And Tesco. Just cheaper, hundred percent Tesco. This this pharmacy olive oil. I hope there is no pharmacist over here. <laughs> Two pound fifty for what? Olive oil is olive oil. It will not change. No, will it be first pressed or anything like that? You know, virgin, extra virgin, things like that. No. Your skin just want olive oil. Uh, we want extras and all these things. You oh. know. <laughs> and one more thing. Yes. Yeah. What about? Um, Gin, uh, gar garlic, garlic yes. oil, is that good for you? I hear no, I put, garlic uh, oil. No, I wouldn't yes. put garlic here in the ear, right? Because one There's thing is... There's a recipe is chop mm -hmm. some onion and some garlic and some olive oil and eat it till it's brown, till it gets very brown and then... Honestly, I, I have no experience. <laughs> I have no experience. No, I, have no experience. <laughs> okay, I, thought I would stick to pure olive oil, okay. coconut oil or almond oil. So those who don't like olive oil, they can go for coconut oil, they can go for almond oil. They are all moisturizers. Just like you moisturize your skin, you moisturize your ear canal. Okay, thank yes? you. Any more questions? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yes. This is why they are, you see, we are, we are copying everything, aren't we? Our speech is what we hear, we copy and then we speak. So what they can hear, they will say. What they can't hear, they will not say. Right? Put the child in the jungle with no sound, the child will be ah, ah, ah. You know, that sounds. Right? Put the child among the people who are speaking, the child will develop the same language as the people around. 
राइट उर्दू इंग्लिश गुजराती वॉट एवर पंजाबी यस because of some change of temperature which occurred a long time ago can that whole be surgically improve yeah. and bring it back to the yeah, very easy very easy uh, this short process marinoplasty right. if this is a hole which is causing some problem with the water going in your middle ear infection hearing problem no i mean that hole has been scarred Yeah, yeah, we can remove the scar, the scar, and then because the edges have to be refreshed anyway, you know, for the skin to grow. That can break the tendon. That's right. This is the hole. We take the margin away, and then we put a little graft to form the base. And on this base, the skin starts growing. The hole closes. Second question: Was how long is the outer canal? The front and the back, the length. Length of the outer canal. It's 2.5 centimeter. 2.5 centimeter. One inch. Right. One inch. And the third question is: Can you put pressure with the water while you are in your ear in the shower? See. Or you can leave it. The, the pressure of the shower is fine. There's no I problem. I mean, we can wash. Yeah, place. yeah. There's no problem. Some people use olive oil and like this water. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. This is what the district nurses are doing. They're putting yeah. wash. Yeah. But make sure that you don't feel dizzy. because if you feel dizzy and you fall down in the shower room that's a problem so make sure that your spouse is around you to no no not that no in case in case if you were to do like this for the wet sleep then you make sure that somebody is around you to ensure that you are not dizzy because this can cause dizziness so when you go to the district nurse for for irrigation the the risk which are due to the irrigation are dizziness pain bleeding tinnitus right perforation and and pain mm -hmm. so the district the district nurse will tell you before this so you can have the same problem with this one but the pressure is not much shower yeah, so you are okay but you can feel dizzy okay. the, the sentinitus can be ringing whistling buzzing hissing shushing shushing they can all different kinds of right but when you hear the human and the ghost voice this is not in this <laughs> some people who have got hallucination auditory hallucination they will come mujhe aurton ki awaazein sunne ko aati hain doctor saab so you know he is not complaining of tinnitus he is complaining of hallucination right so okay. you know no to then i say to them fikr mat karo mujhe bhi meri biwi ki awaaz 24 aata hai So how to cover it? <laughs> so thank you for everybody uh, who is coming today, and uh, inshallah we will keep this one, and uh, we will announce for the next month. The other talk most likely will be on healthy diet, inshallah. Thank so you. thank you for everybody coming, and we especially thanks for Dr. Bal to join us.